The night air was crisp over Honolulu, carrying the scent of salt from the Pacific as United Airlines Flight 811 prepared for departure. The Boeing 747, a massive metal beast, loomed over the tarmac, bathed in the yellow glow of airport lights. The cabin bustled with the usual pre-flight commotion, passengers settling in, the soft murmur of conversation, and the occasional chime of a flight attendant call button. Captain David Cronin, a veteran with over 30 years of experience, sat in the cockpit, going through the final checklist with First Officer Al Slater and Flight Engineer Mark Thomas. Their voices were steady, methodical, laced with the casual confidence of seasoned aviators. The aircraft, though aging, was still a workhorse, trusted to carry its 337 souls safely to Auckland. In the cabin, passengers adjusted their seats, flipped through magazines, or stared out into the darkness beyond the thick cabin windows. Some were heading home, others off on business, and a few on the adventure of a lifetime. Among them, seasoned travelers knew the subtle lurch of an aircraft pulling away from the gate, the slow crawl to the runway, the slight increase in the hum of engines as power built. Then, with a deep, powerful roar, Flight 811 thundered down the runway, its engines hungry for altitude. The moment the wheels left the ground, the aircraft became a creature of the sky, climbing steadily toward its cruising altitude of 22,000 feet. The city lights shrank beneath them, swallowed by the ink-black expanse of the Pacific. Eleven minutes after takeoff, Flight 811 had reached 22,000 feet, leveling off smoothly. The passengers had begun to relax, some ordering drinks, others already, drifting into the fragile slumber of an overnight flight. Then it happened. A sudden deafening boom split the air, so powerful it seemed to shake the very bones of the aircraft. The fuselage shuddered violently, the force so intense that passengers were jolted against their seats, heads snapping toward the source of the explosion. A collective gasp swept the cabin. In an instant, the aircraft's forward cargo door located. On the lower deck had torn completely free, ripped away by an unseen force. The decompression was immediate, brutal. The rush of air roared through the cabin like a hurricane, an unrelenting force that didn't just steal breath, it stole lives. Rows of seats, along with nine passengers, were sucked out of the gaping, hole in the fuselage. Their bodies vanished into the night, lost to the abyss of the Pacific. Overhead compartments burst open, spewing luggage into the aisle like missiles. Oxygen masks dropped from the ceiling, jerking wildly in the chaos. Yet few had the presence of mind to grab them. Panic seized the cabin, screams lost in the deafening howl of the rushing wind. In the cockpit, alarms blared as the aircraft bucked like a wounded animal. The violent depressurization had caused severe structural damage, but Captain Cronin had no time to assess the full extent. The first priority was to regain control. Emergency descent, he shouted, gripping the control yoke. First Officer Slater was already ahead, dialing back the thrust, pushing the aircraft into a rapid descent. Toward breathable altitude, the plane plunged at an alarming rate, their bodies pressing into their seats as gravity reasserted its hold. We've lost part of the fuselage, Thomas yelled over the alarms. Electrical failures, cabin depressurized, Cronin's hands were steady, but his mind raced. At 22,000 feet, the lack of oxygen was a death sentence if they didn't descend fast enough. Get us to 10,000 feet, he ordered. The aircraft rumbled its structure groaning under the immense forces acting upon it. The crew had no way of knowing the full extent of the damage. Not yet. All they knew was that part of the plane had been ripped open. Passengers were missing, and they were in a race against time. As Flight 811 reached safer altitude, the chaos in the cabin gave way to stunned silence. The wind had lessened, though it still howled through the fractured fuselage, Flight attendants, trained for emergencies but never for something like this, moved through the cabin, checking on passengers, tending to injuries where they could. In the cockpit, the crew assessed their options. The nearest safe landing was back in Honolulu, 
there was no debate. They had to return. Declaring emergency, Cronin called over the radio, his voice firm despite the magnitude of what had happened. We're returning to Honolulu. We have decompression and structural damage. Understood, United 811, came the response. Cleared for immediate approach. As the crippled aircraft made its turn back toward the island, the realization of how close they were to catastrophe became chillingly clear. The fuselage near the first-class section was ripped open, a jagged wound exposing the aircraft's fragile insides. The metal around the cargo door had been peeled back, evidence of a catastrophic failure, but the aircraft was still flying. And, so long as it flew, there was hope. The descent was painstaking, every moment stretched by the weight of uncertainty. The crew focused, their hands and minds locked on the singular goal— Get everyone down alive. The glowing lights of Honolulu emerged from the darkness, a beacon of salvation. The aircraft lined up for its approach, the damaged fuselage groaning, under the strain. The landing gear deployed, and with a final breath, Captain Cronin guided the wounded 747 toward the runway. The wheels touched down with a heavy thud, the aircraft rolling to a stop as emergency vehicles swarmed the tarmac. A burst of relief rippled through the cabin, the nightmare finally over. As the doors opened and passengers were evacuated, the true horror of what had happened began to settle in. The gaping hole where the cargo door once was. The rows of seats that had been violently torn away the realization that nine lives had been lost to the unforgiving void of the sky. Yet the rest had survived. Through the skill of the pilots, the resilience of the crew, and sheer force of will, 328 souls walked away from the disaster that could have ended far worse. In the weeks that followed, investigations uncovered the cause. A failure in the cargo, doors locking mechanism, a design flaw that had gone unnoticed, a flaw that had claimed lives. United 811 would never fly again, but its story would serve as a grim lesson in aviation history, a warning written in torn metal and lost lives, a testament to the thin line between disaster and survival and the unwavering will of those who refused to surrender to the sky. The flashing lights of emergency vehicles painted streaks of red and blue across the tarmac as the passengers of United 811 were ushered into the terminal. Some clutched blankets around their shoulders, others sat silently, their minds still trapped in the chaos of the sky. A few openly wept, unable to hold back the tidal wave of emotion crashing over them. The sterile brightness of the airport did little to calm their shattered nerves. Captain David Cronin stood by the shattered aircraft, his body exhausted but his mind still sharp. He had saved as many lives as he could, but the weight of the nine lost passengers pressed heavy on his chest. He had to know what had happened. The Boeing 747 had been a reliable workhorse, but something had gone terribly wrong. NTSB investigators arrived within the hour, their faces grim as they approached the wreckage. The aircraft's gaping wound, the section where the cargo door had been, was like an open mouth screaming a silent warning. The investigators wasted no time, snapping photos, taking notes, and examining every inch of the structural failure. Inside, flight attendants huddled together, sharing fragmented recollections of the chaos. Linda Holtz, one of the senior attendants, trembled as she recounted the moment the cabin ripped open. I remember seeing the entire row just gone, she whispered, eyes distant. One second they were there, and the next just nothing. Two days later, in a stark conference room filled with aviation officials, engineers, and airline executives, the investigation had begun in earnest. Diagrams of the 747 were spread across the table, red markings indicating the suspected failure points. Captain Cronin sat with his crew, their faces drawn and weary. NTSB lead investigator Mark Reynolds tapped a section of the diagram with the butt of his pen. The cargo door, he said, voice firm, 
This is where it all started. First Officer Slater leaned forward. What exactly happened? Reynolds exhaled, flipping through his notes. The locking mechanism failed. The door blew outward due to a faulty latch system. When it detached, the sudden decompression tore apart the forward fuselage. The room fell silent. The weight of that statement was suffocating. So it wasn't sabotage. No explosion, Cronin asked, his tone even, though his fingers curled. Slightly against the table's edge, Reynolds shook his head. No, this was a mechanical failure, a preventable one. A murmur rippled through the room. The airline executives exchanged glances, knowing the implications of those words. This was no freak accident. It was a flaw lurking in their fleet, a disaster waiting to repeat itself. As the investigation continued, the world watched. The media swarmed Honolulu, eager for survivor accounts, eager to understand how a plane could simply fall apart in midair. One survivor, James Larkin, a businessman from Seattle, found himself in front of flashing cameras. I thought we were dead, he admitted, his voice thick. I was in first class, maybe four or five rows from the breach. One second I was sipping my drink, the next I was gripping my seat for dear life. Reporters jotted down every word, eyes hungry for details. What do you remember about the passengers who were lost? A journalist pressed. Larkin swallowed hard. I saw a woman reach for her husband as he was sucked out. She screamed. God, that scream, I'll never forget it. His voice broke. And then she was gone, too. Others spoke of their terror, their gratitude for the pilots, their guilt for surviving when others had not. Some avoided interviews entirely, still lost in their trauma. Days turned into weeks, and the horror of United 811's flight refused to fade. Public outcry grew as reports surfaced. This wasn't the first cargo door failure on a Boeing 747. Previous incidents had occurred, near misses that should have been warnings. But now, with nine lives lost, those warnings could no longer be ignored. Families of the victims demanded accountability. Lawsuits loomed. Airline officials scrambled, caught between corporate damage control and the undeniable truth. Something had to change. At Boeing's headquarters, engineers were called into crisis meetings. The FAA, under mounting pressure, issued immediate directives for inspections across all similar aircraft. The 747's cargo door system was deemed a critical fault. It would have to be redesigned. For Captain Cronin, the fight was personal. He testified before the aviation board, recounting every detail of that night. This was preventable, he stated firmly. We got lucky. If that door had blown off at a different altitude, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about survivors. His words carried weight. The world listened. Months later, United Airlines Flight 811 faded from the news, but its impact endured. Boeing issued new cargo door latches, reinforced their safety procedures, and redesigned the 747's structural integrity. Airlines complied, driven not just by regulation, but by the fear of repeating the nightmare of Flight 811. In Honolulu, a small memorial was placed at the airport, a plaque with the names of the nine who never made it home. Some survivors returned to pay their respects their eyes filled with the memories of that fateful night. Captain Cronin retired not long after. The weight of what had happened stayed with him, though he found solace in knowing his actions had saved lives. The wreckage of United 811 was eventually dismantled, its broken body a silent testament to the fragility of human engineering. But its legacy was one of change, a lesson carved into the history of aviation, a reminder that safety in the skies is not just a privilege, but a responsibility. And so, the story of United 811 became more than a tragedy. It became a turning point, ensuring that never again would a plane fall apart after takeoff without warning. A lesson learned in blood, 
but one that saved countless lives in the years to come.